Air taxis are now making the trip from sci-fi films to major cities. Aircraft manufacturer Volcity Vol 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 says it Velocity? Velocity says it plans to launch flying taxis in Paris during the Summer Olympics. We're going to get a chance to see these. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has a plan for an air taxi market by 2028, with operations beginning in less than two years. So what does the future with flying taxis actually look like? Futurist Nicholas Badminton is joining us for this month's Future Fridays. And well, we've got a picture of it. Will it look like this? Who, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe in the in the far future, but right now they kind of feel like, you know, very large drones that humans can ride in. Okay, well, we're not very far from actually getting to see these in right. operation. Paris is not the only city making strides in the flying car future. Dubai could have a fully operational flying taxis yeah. by 2026. Those cars could travel up to 300 kilometers an hour. So how are they being tested right now? Are people getting into them? Yeah, so, so right now, a lot of it's being done uh, in an autonomous fashion and being controlled from the ground. But some people are getting into them, but they're trained pilots, right? So it's not just like normal people like you and I right. jumping in for the occasional ride. They've still got a long way to go. And, and the, the business case for air taxis is, is still really shaky. I mean, if you think about it, it's like, you know, we're, we've already got a, a very busy, chaotic city, and yeah. as is Paris and as is Dubai. More noise, more traffic in the air, more complications. I mean, it, it's really tricky. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty of this. Yeah. Pretend air taxis are operating right now, sure. right? Business case aside. And I want to travel in one. Do I use my phone? How do I order a taxi? How do I hail a flying taxi? Uh, and where would I go to get one? I mean, the, the, the idea uh, conceptually is you would go to these vertiports, you'd go there, you'd check in, you'd jump in one, and then you'd head to wherever you're going. Okay. Typically, to begin with, it's going to be from, from a downtown core to an airport, or maybe for some emergency services, a ride to a hospital or, or ambulance okay. uh, I see style that. ride. Um, so it's not going to be like Uber. We're not going to be like bang, 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 and suddenly it's going to drop down in front of your apartment block. You're going to jump in and let's go, right? Okay. But some people are speculating that more and more uh, high-rise apartment blocks are going to be built with these vertiports on the roof. So maybe you're going to have these uber exclusive places, and I think this is what Dubai and places like that are thinking about. You know, places where you've got your own ver vertiport and you can scoot across the city wherever you need to go. And and we were talking joking before. They don't look like what's in the monitor behind yeah. us, but do they do they look like a mini helicopter? Do they look like a big drone? What are they looking yeah, like so it, far? Generally, it looks like a, a, a mini drone. Okay. Right, a cross between a helicopter and, and and sort of a, okay. a a larger drone. It's going to be really loud. So it's interesting. Oh, yeah. um, some people are saying, oh, it could, could replace commuting. Well, if you take an eight-lane highway, you need about 1,400 in the air for this to actually replace that. It's never going to replace tra uh, transportation and traffic and logistics. It's going to add to it. It's a creative technology. So this is it. This is just a more cacophonous future. Huh. So, um, you know, as a futurist, yeah. I'm hugely skeptical. A lot of people in the world are hugely skeptical. The people that aren't, the people building the technology that are trying to convince the world to do it, that's why we're seeing, going to see it at the Olympics. Yeah. That's why we're starting to see it in these cities like Dubai. It's got tons of money, and it's all about status and showing themselves as a new city in a modern world and maybe a vision of the future that you know, people want to move to and be a part of. In order to make visions happen, though, we need rules and regulations. So how would this be regulated? Um, it's going to be heavy, heavily regulated. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially in city context. I mean, if you think about it, even this building that we're in right now, yeah. we own a certain amount of airspace above it. Right. So if you think about a large city like Toronto or Vancouver, wherever, you literally have to clear the ability to be able to fly through the airspace over potentially tens of thousands of buildings. Yeah. That alone, just to begin with, is a really complicated situation. Then air traffic control for these? Yeah. We're a long way away. We're a long, long way away from this being a reality. Okay, but Paris isn't that far away. Yeah. So would you get into one? Would I get into it? I, I, I do all of this. I'm into it. I, I'm, you a, try I'm, it. A, I'm an early adopter, for sure. But I want to see, um, see safety records. You want to see safety records? I want to see safety records. I want to see test plans. I want to see things that prove that I'm not going to get into it and suddenly, like, nosedive. Listen, I think it's a novel idea. Would I put my country's athletes in one? Probably not. No. Not before competition. Anyway, Nick, always good to have you here. This Thank was you. fun. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.